Okay. So today's problem is best time to buy and sell stock. Are you meant to be sharing your screen? Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Good catch. And good call out. So can y'all see it now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate that. So today's question is best time to buy and sell stock. You can now see where I'm actually pointing to and read the question. But we're giving an array of prices where prices of I is the price of a given stock on the ith day. The days don't particularly matter for this case. It could be any unit of time. But we want to maximize the profit by choosing a single day to buy one stock and choose a different day in the future to sell that stock. And we will return the maximum profit we achieve from this transaction. And if we don't have any profit, we return zero, which means at max, I guess we still would purchase a stock and sell it. It wouldn't be like we just don't buy it, but we would just return zero in that case. Not that it makes a meaningful difference here. And then these um, are a bit complicated for example, so I'm going to come up with some less complicated ones. And for the constraints, we're going to have at least one price. And the prices are going to be from 0 to 10 to the 4th power. Any questions so far? OK. I think for whatever reason, I am not in streamer mode, so I'm going to turn that on real quick. OK, cool. Now we should not have pings all over the recording from people joining and leaving. OK, so since I noticed that we can have a prices array of length one, that means we can never purchase and sell because we need a different day in the future to sell that stock. So I'll just put this one after here. So if we just have any number in here, that should return a zero. So we can just simply return zero here and it should pass that test case. And it passes this other random test case, which is a good one as well. But I will simplify it just since it's more complicated than it needs to be. So this brings up another good case. There's no transactions. Oh, it does say no transactions are done, so you can just not buy. So in the case where The first values, the earlier days, the stock is worth more than in the future or equal, then you should not buy because you won't be making any money. So for this case where we have it's worth two and then one, we would not purchase it. Or if it's worth two and two, you could purchase it if you'd like, but it wouldn't make you any money. But there's no taxes or anything in this problem. OK, and then just to simplify this test case as well, I'm not entirely sure what it wants to do. It wants to show us that we should not purchase on the first day if we're not making money. But I'm just going to do one and two. Oh, they do bring up. It's just doing multiple things at once. Um, you can't buy at a future date and then sell in the past. You must buy before you sell. 
So I'll add that to a future test case as well. But for this one, just purely, we're going to buy this or buy here and sell here. Yep. And then to pass this case, we could just at this point. get the minimum and the maximum and subtract them. And then if that happens to be positive, return that value, otherwise return zero. So max is equal to the maximum price out of all of these. I'm not sure why, oh, I guess I could do it in here. There's no specific reason why not right now. Move back over to Vim. And then we're going to get the min as well. And our profit is equal to max minus min. Maybe this won't work. It'll probably actually fail because of this second test case right here. Hmm. We will find out. So let's just start out by returning profit and seeing which runs fail. It does fail that second test case because we get one instead of zero. So we could go ahead and um, check to see if the value we found is prior. Or we could just start out by throwing in a double, at double for loop, which I feel like makes sense here. Just check out every single value just to move things along. So max profit here is just a zero. And we're going to go through this for loop. And get all the prices. That is not what I wanted to paste. And I'll call this price one and price two. And then we'll just say if max profit is more than the current profit or current max profit, the current profit we make from these two is more, then we'll set that to the max profit. Otherwise, leave it alone. So I will say cons profit equals price one minus price two. And then if we do, I'm not sure if this will work either, but we'll find out. I might have to do an index for loop so we can start it at a specific place. So checking this, I can't return that because it doesn't exist, which is understandable. And yeah, we're just checking every single case again, which does not help us, but let us change that up.
I'm not sure how to unhighlight that actually. Is there any way to do that? Okay, I can just search again. Okay, cool. So then price one is the price we would buy at, and then we, yeah, let's just call these buy price and sell price. So buy price equals prices of I, and then sell prices, prices of J. And then we want the, the profit will be our sell price minus the buy price. And then this should work, hopefully. Oh, good point. Byte Galaxy says that I should start my inner loop at one. But I think that we should actually start it at i plus one to start it after wherever i is. Oh yeah, and the top loop should be minus one. It would still work, I think, but good catch. And this does work. We still don't have a test case for not purchasing in the past, but this one will not purchase in the past. Oh, no, this one counts for not purchasing in the past. That does catch that case. Are there any cases anyone in the audience can think of that I don't have covered? Thinking about it now, I don't have anywhere where we have multiples in here. We just assume that we buy. So like, for example, this, we would not want to buy here and sell here because that does not make sense to do. We would want to buy here and then sell back here. And this should hopefully still work. But it's good to cover it. And this one, just to check again, we can throw both of these in here. It can't hurt to test them. But I expect both of them to pass because they're just very similar to what we have, or at least testing multiple things. Yep, they all work. Does anyone have any questions so far? Hungry Hungry Hippo is asking if this is an efficient answer or if there's a more efficient way of doing it. And yes, this answer is not very efficient. We're checking every single um, price in the array um, twice. Or we're not checking it twice exactly. It's n divided by two squared. Because it's kind of like a triangle shape. Like, for example, we don't need to worry about that exactly. But if we have like one, two, three in our array, and then later on we check that just we start at two and then move on and check three. And then after this, we don't check, but we could, but it's kind of like essentially a triangle-esque shape. So it would be an n squared, but divided by two. n squared divided by two minus one for our exact way of doing it or calculating it, which just ends up being O of n squared for time complexity. And then for space complexity, we're storing one number here and then a few numbers here but they're never any different from each loop so it's o of one for space complexity but yeah there is a more efficient way of doing this we don't actually need to check every single way or every single one of these combinations 
Does anyone have any more questions before we move on to the more efficient way of doing it? Okay, I just wanted to get into the more efficient solution before we moved on. Or the, the brute force, sorry. So let's do something else here. Just to look at a simple example. So our current way of doing it, we're checking this one against, or number one, we have an array of one, two, three, four over all of our prices. We're checking one against two, one against three, one against four every single time. Same thing for two, checking three with two and four with two and three, all of that. But if we just kind of look at this logically, if we see one as our buy price and you can see into the future, you wouldn't even think about checking these twos because it, you can't possibly make more money by buying at a higher price. So if we just buy at the lowest price we've seen so far, and then purchase at the end, that works. So for example, here we would just check nothing at this point because there's nothing to check against, but we could say one minus one, maybe make no profit, but you can't do that. But yeah, we check here two minus one, we have $1. And then after this, we're on three and the cheapest price we've seen so far is a one. So we check there. Now our max profits two and then checking here, we do four minus one and we get three. So we just need to keep track of that number for a little bit more complicated of a, an example. Let's say we do two, one, or maybe we do two, three, one, two, seven, something like that. So here we've only seen two and then we check against three, three minus two. We save our minimum. I'm just gonna write it down here. Our minimum is currently two. We check two against three. And we get our profit of one. And then we move on to this next one. We have a new minimum. There's no reason to check against two anymore. And then afterwards, if our number is not smaller than the minimum, we're just going to check our new profit. And in this case, it's still one. And then moving on to this seven, we have a new profit, which is six. But if we add something like, let's say 31 right here, our profit would be 29 because we never found a bigger profit. Does that all make sense? Any questions? Okay, so the logic for the solution is essentially if we don't have a number or our minimum, we're going to set it here. And then after that fact, if this number is less than the minimum, we're going to calculate or we're going to set it as the minimum. And then otherwise we're going to check the profit. If they're equal, we could either set a new minimum or the profit or simply just ignore it. But I find it makes the logic easier if we include it in one of those other cases, just saying if it's less than or equal to the minimum or just including it in the new profit, which will be zero. Just makes it easier to follow for me personally. Okay, so our new way of doing this, we only ever need 
one for a loop, but we need a new variable, which is minimum, minimum price. And we don't want that at zero, actually. I'm gonna set it at infinity, just as a placeholder number, because at that point, anything minus infinity is going to be a ridiculously low price, negative infinity. So we could either set it as null or set it as the first number, but I'm just gonna do infinity just so we can make things a little, or it's stylistic at this point. It could be either. So then our buy price is no longer prices of I, it's just minimum price. And we no longer need this for loop here. And our final piece of logic that we don't have, if prices of I is less than minimum price, then that means our minimum price, if I can spell it correctly, is prices of I. And then we're going to move on and do all of this logic. And this should be our final solution, unless I have done something wrong. So let's see. Oh, I did something wrong in here. So we got an output of zero for one and two. And I am not sure why. Oh, we're still doing minus one. We shouldn't be doing that anymore. Let's try again. And that looks better. And we can refactor a little bit just to make it easier to read. So I'm going to say for cons price of prices, and then refactor all of these. What did I have that as? Oh, it's just Yep, yeah, and that should still work. And it does. And I could probably refactor a bit more, but that looks pretty good to me right now. So let's submit and see if it works. It does. There's a weird formatting thing here that I did not realize, but we're here. And I know there's a stand up going on, so feel free to leave for that. But if you do stay, I'll just go over an example real quick with this code. Or for any questions, if you'd like. So any questions before I move on? Is that a question? Oh, 
And don't worry, Caleb, I'm not going to leave just yet. Okay, if nobody has any more questions, I'm just going to run through an example real quick. And I'll do a split screen. So let's say we have our seven, two, one, three, or let's make this a seven as well. Three, one, two. Just some random numbers I thought of. So if we start here, let's write placeholders for our minimum. And then I will just write prof for profit. So at the current moment, we have no minimum. Well, actually, we do set our minimum in our code to infinity. And our max profit is at zero. And then at this point, we are in our for loop. So we're going to check to see if our price is less than minimum price. And in the first go around, it will always be the case. So this is now not infinity, and it is seven. And then we're going to continue on to the next loop. So doing that again, we are on this loop. We're on number two, or not number two. We're on the first index, which happens to be a two. And this price is lower than the minimum again. So we're just going to change this to a two. And then moving on to the next one, we're on our new loop. This price is not lower than the minimum. So we get past this block and we're going to calculate the profit, which is our current price minus the minimum price. So seven minus two, which gives us five. And then, well, I shouldn't have done that just yet, but we check our maximum profit versus our profit, which was zero and five, and the maximum between both of those is five. So that does become our new maximum profit. Moving on to the next one, we're now on three. So checking that, it is not lower than our minimum price. So we move on to the block below, out of that if statement. And we calculate our profit, which is the current price, three, minus the minimum price, which is two. And our profit is one. And we check our max profit. Um, someone asked in chat, can we only buy and sell once in this problem? And the answer to that is yes, we can only buy zero or one times. There is a part two for this problem where we buy and sell infinite amount of times. Which I'm not sure if is actually in here. It might be. Either way, it's a pretty good problem as well. I like it. Nope, it's not actually in there. Oh yeah, I actually found part two easier than this one because you can do it. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone who hasn't done it, but it lends itself well to doing it simply. It removes the restriction of one, which makes it easier in my opinion. But yeah, moving on. 
we are on three. Okay, yeah, so we got the price of one, and we get the max between one and five, which is still five, so we're setting it to five. Then moving on to one, we check to see if that's lower than two, which it is, so we're going to set the minimum to one and move on. And on our final element two, we're gonna do, we're going to check to see if this price is lower than the minimum, which it is not, our minimum is one. And finally, well, finally we got out of the array, we continue. Oh no, we, oh, it's not less, sorry. So we are still in here. So instead of continuing, because we don't actually go into this block, we get the profit from there, which is two minus one, and that is one price unit. And we check between one and five, and five is still the max, so we set max profit to five. Any questions on any of that? Or anything so far? The time complexity for this solution, if I haven't gone over it already, is O of n, since we only loop over each price one time. And the space complexity is still O of 1, because we're only holding we're saving the same amount of variables every single time. And they're all numbers, so it doesn't change anything. It's pretty negligible. Any final questions? Okay, I'm going to maybe stop the recording. I see someone typing. Okay, I will end the recording here.